Now, before World War II, the United Kingdom, Great Britain, had some amazing ships. For example, the RMS Laconia of the Cunard Line. And the SS Ceramic of the White Star Line. But sadly, during World War II, some of these fine ships would be lost, along with many others. Hello everybody, my name is Jamie from Old Shipping Lines, and in today's video we'll cover some shipwrecks of Great Britain during World War II. Enjoy! Now our first ship is also known as the first UK ship to be sunk by Germany during World War II, the SS Athenia. She was a transatlantic passenger liner owned by the company Anchor Donaldson Line. This vessel was built by the shipbuilders Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company in Glasgow, Scotland. Now, if we talk about her specifics, her gross tonnage would be 13,465 gross registered tons, with her length being 526.3 feet. The ship had a beam of 66.4 feet. She had six steam turbines driving twin screws via double reduction gearing, giving her a speed of 15 knots. She was launched on the 28th of January 1922 and completed on the 19th of April 1923. She served as a passenger liner until the early years of World War II, when she was sunk by U-30 on the 3rd of September 1939. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Athenia was the first ship from the United Kingdom to be sunk by Germany in World War II, resulting in the greatest loss of life at sea for the Donaldson Line, where 117 civilian passengers and crew lost their lives. This tragic event was considered a war crime. The casualties included 28 US citizens, leading to concerns in Germany about possible US involvement on the side of the United Kingdom and France. German authorities during wartime denied that their vessel had caused this sinking, with an admission of responsibility only coming from them in 1946. Now our next ship is the RMS Nova Scotia. She was a transatlantic ocean liner whose first owners were Johnston Warren Lines. She was built by the shipbuilders Vikers Limited. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 6,796 gross registered tons, with her length being 406. 0.1 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 55.4 feet. She could reach a speed of 15 knots and she was launched in May 1926. Now after the United Kingdom entered World War II in September 1939, the ship initially continued her civilian operations. On the 21st of September 1940, she departed from Liverpool heading to Canada, with passengers including the last 29 children 
evacuated from Britain under the Children Overseas Reception Board. Later, in 1941, during the war, the Nova Scotia was requisitioned by the Ministry of War Transport and repurposed as a troop ship. Unfortunately, in the fall of 1942, the ship departed Port Tufik in Egypt and travelled down the Red Sea to Massawa in British-occupied Eritrea. There, she disembarked US troops and took on Italian prisoners of war. The ship also made a stop at the British colony of Eden, before continuing southward without an escort. On board were over 750 Italian prisoners of war and civilian internees, as well as 3000 bags of mail destined for Durban, South Africa. Now, as the Nova Scotia sailed through the Mozambique Channel of the coast of Natal Province, South Africa, on November the 28th at 7.15 am, she was struck by three torpedoes from the German U-boat U-177. The ship rolled to her side, caught fire and sank within just 10 minutes after being hit. 858 people drowned. Now our third ship will be the SS Erin Pura. She was an E-class ocean liner of the British India Steam Navigation Company. She would be built by the shipbuilders William Danny and Brovers. Now if we talk about her specifics, her gross tonnage would be 5128 gross registered tons, with her length being 411.0 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 52.5 feet, and she could go a speed of 16.7 knots. The vessel would be launched on the 9th of October 1911, with her being completed on the 6th of December 1911. Now, the vessel would survive the First World War. However, sadly, during World War II, on the 29th of April 1943, the Erinpura set sail from Alexandria in convoy MV-27, bound for Malta. Captain P. V. Corter was in charge of the Erinpura, serving as the commandorship ship for the convoy. The vessel carried over 1,000 troops, including members of the African Auxiliary Pioneer Corps from Basuto and Batswana descent, and Palestinian Jewish soldiers belonging to the British Army 462 Transport Company. Now, the Erin Pura was among a group of 20 merchant ships in MV-27, accompanied by her sister ship, Egra, and two other vessels from the British India Steam Navigation Company. The convoy also included six Royal Navy destroyers, four Hellenic Navy destroyers, and two Royal Navy minesweepers providing escort duty. On the evening of the 1st of May 1943, German bomber aircraft attacked the convoy 30 nautical miles north of Benghazi. The ships took evasive action and returned fire. A bomb hit the Erinpura in one of her forward holds, causing her to list to starboard 
and sync within 4 or 5 minutes. The damp screw of her 12 pounder anti-aircraft gun continued to return fire until she sank. More than 800 people on board the Erin Pura were killed. Now our next ship is the TSS Scotia. She was a passenger vessel operated by the London and North Western Railway from 1921 to 1923 and the London, Midland and Scottish Railway from 1923 to 1940. She would be built by the shipbuilders William Denny and Brothers. Now if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 3454 gross registered tons, with her length being 380.5 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 45.2 feet. The ship would be launched on November the 16th, 1920. However, sadly, during World War II, on the 1st of June 1940, she was bombed by German aircraft during the Dunkirk evacuation. The destroyer HMS Esk came alongside and rescued nearly 1000 troops. Meanwhile, the destroyer HMS Worcester was close by and also rescued some survivors. Sadly, 28 of her crew members and around 200 to 300 French troops lost their lives in the attack. Now our next ship is the SS Arandora Star. She was a British passenger ship for the Blue Star Line. She would be built by the shipbuilders Camel Laird. Now if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 12,847 gross registered tons, with her length being 512.2 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 68.3 feet. She could go a speed of 16 knots. Now the vessel would be launched on the 4th of January 1927 and completed in May 1927. She would live her life as a passenger liner and cruise ship. However, during World War II she would be requisitioned as a troop ship. Now the Arandora Star's final voyage involved transporting Italian and German internees, detained under the Defense Regulation 18b, as well as German prisoners of war to Canada, departing from Liverpool on the 30th of June, with a total of 734 interned Italian men, 479 interned German men, including some Jewish refugees, and 86 German prisoners of war, accompanied by 200 military guards, and a crew of 174 officers and men under the command of Captain Edgar Wallace Moulton. Now the ship was headed for St. John's, Newfoundland with the internees bound for Canadian internment camps. Sailing without an escort, she was struck by a single torpedo from U-47 commanded by Gunter Preen early in the morning of the 2nd of July, while approximately 75 miles west of Bloody Foreland, Ireland. 
Now, one of the internees was Captain Otto Burfeind, who had been interned after scuttling his ship, the Adolf Wurman. Burfeind stayed on board the Arandora Star, coordinating her evacuation until she sank, and unfortunately, he was lost. The ship listed further to starboard. At 7.15 a.m., Captain Moulton and his senior officers walked over the side into the rising water, leaving behind many Italians who were still afraid to leave the ship. At 7.20 a.m., the ship rolled over, raised her bow in the air and sank. 805 people drowned, including Captain Moulton, 12 of his officers, 42 of his crew, and 37 of the military guards. Now our next ship is the SS Chakdina. This vessel was a passenger slash cargo ship. She would be owned by the British India Steam Navigation Co. And she would be built by the shipbuilders Ramage and Ferguson LTD. She would be built in the year 1914. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 3033 gross registered tons. The vessel could go a speed of 15.2 knots. Now, during World War II, on the 13th of January 1940, the Admiralty took over the SS Chakdina as an armed boarding vessel. On the 5th of December 1941, in the late afternoon, the SS Chakdina departed Tobruk Harbor in Libya. She was carrying approximately 380 wounded Allied soldiers and around 100 German and Italian prisoners of war. Additionally, there were about 120 crew members on board to assist with operations. Now, the ship was also joined by a group of other Allied soldiers who needed transportation back to Egypt. The Royal Navy had commandeered the Chakdina for use as a hospital ship during this time. Notably, at least 123 New Zealanders were among those on board when she set sail. Shortly after 9 p.m., a enemy aircraft, an Italian S-97 torpedo bomber, dropped a torpedo triggering an explosion in one of the rear holds of the Chakdina. Now the ship sank in just three and a half minutes. Surviving this disaster was unlikely, unless you were uninjured or only slightly injured and positioned away from the blast zone. Tragically, around 400 men lost their lives in this wreck including 80 New Zealanders, most of whom had survived the battles at Sedi Rezeg and Belhamed. The sinking of the SS Chakdina was the only major calamity in the evacuation of New Zealand wounded during World War II. Now, our next ship is the SS City of Benares. She was a British ocean liner built for Ellerman Lines. She would be built by the shipbuilders Barclay, Curl and Co. of Glasgow. Now, if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 11,081 gross registered tons, with her length being 509 feet. The ship would have had a beam of 62 
5.7 feet. The vessel would be launched on the 5th of August 1936 and she would be completed in October 1936. Now during peacetime she would live her life as a passenger liner. However, during World War II, in May 1940, the Ellerman Lines decided to provide three of its largest passenger ships. The Benares, the city of Paris and the city of Simla for the Corp to evacuate children. These three liners were fitted out for war service and by August the Benares, Simla and Paris were ready for service. This would be Benares' first Atlantic crossing. Unfortunately, on the evening of Friday, the 13th of September 1940, the Benares departed Liverpool for the final time. She was sailing in convoy OB213 bound for Montreal and carried a total of 408 people on board, including 90 corp children aged 5 to 15. Tragically, late in the evening on the 17th of September, U-48, commanded by Captain Lieutenant Heinrich Bleigrot, spotted the city of Benares and launched two torpedoes at her around 10 p.m. Despite both torpedoes missing their target initially at the time, another torpedo struck her stern, causing her to sink within just 31 minutes at approximately 10.03 p.m. Now, this devastating sinking resulted in a loss of 260 lives out of a complement of 408, with 77 casualties being among the evacuated children. Upon learning about this tragedy, it led to Winston Churchill taking action by cancelling the Children's Overseas Reception Board, or shortly known as Corp Plan, which aimed to relocate British children abroad, due to public outrage in Britain following the sinking. Now our next ship is the Empire Attendant. She was a British steam merchant ship. She would be owned by the owners Andrew Weir and Co, based in London. She would be built by the shipbuilders Barclay Curl and Co. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 7524 gross registered tons, with her length being 464.0 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 58.3 feet. The ship could go a speed of 13.6 knots. The vessel would be launched on the 23rd of December 1920 and she would be completed on the 14th of December 1921. Now, when the vessel was launched, she was launched as the motor passenger ship Magnava. But when she was completed, she would have had yet a new name and she would have had new owners. Her new name would be Domala and her new owners would be British India Steam Navigation Co. Ltd. They were based in London. However, on the 2nd of March 1940, the Domala got bombed by a German plane and 
got fire before being intentionally grounded in the solent. She was later reconstructed as the steam merchant ship Empire Attendant for the Ministry of War Transport. At 3.30 a.m. on the 15th of July 1942, the Empire Attendant, under Captain Thomas Grundy, veered off from convoy OS-33 and got torpedoed and sunk by U-582 south of the Canary Islands. Sadly, all on board, including her captain, crew members and gunners, were lost in this tragic sinking. Now our next ship is a ship we all know and love. The RMS Lancastria. The Lancastria was a British ocean liner who was owned by the Anchor Line. And she would be built by the shipbuilders William Beardmore and company. Now the ship was formerly known as the Tyrrhenia and if we talk about her specifics the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 16,243 gross registered tons with her length being 578 feet. The ship would have had a beam of 70 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 16.5 knots. The vessel would be launched on the 31st of May 1920. In 1922 she set sail on her maiden voyage from Glasgow to Quebec City, Montreal. Now, two years later, she underwent a makeover to accommodate two classes and was given the name Lancastria due to passenger struggles with pronouncing Tyrrhenia. From 1932 onwards, she sailed between Liverpool and New York before becoming a cruise ship for voyages in the Mediterranean Sea and Northern Europe. Now during World War II she was ordered to sail from Nassau to New York for refitting as she had been requisitioned as a troop ship becoming HMT Lancastria. She was sunk on the 17th of June 1940 during Operation Ariel after getting a urgent command to rescue British nationals and troops from France following the Dunkirk evacuation. Now the ship was overloaded with well over her capacity of 1,300 passengers. Modern guesses indicate that between 4,000 and 7,000 people perished in her sinking, making it the biggest loss of life on a single ship in British maritime history. Now our next ship will be the SS Kuala. She was a passenger slash cargo ship. Her build year would be 1911. She was owned by the Straits Steamship Co. Ltd. Now they were based in Singapore. She would be built by the shipbuilders Caledon Shipbuilding and Engineering Co. Ltd. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 954 gross registered tons. The vessel could go a speed of 12 knots. Now during World War II, she would be owned by the British Royal Navy. 
1942, after enduring a severe bombing, the koala made it safely to Singapore. On the 13th, the ship was tasked with helping evacuate the city. Captain F. Caitness led the effort to rescue 500 civilians, including 250 women and children, before setting sail for South Java as ordered. The next day, Captain Caitness and other refugee-packed ships sought refuge near the Pang Pang Island in South Java. The ships were soon spotted by Japanese aircraft heading for Java, and approximately 40 planes detached from the main formation and attacked the virtually defenseless ships. The Koala suffered a direct hit on the bridge and subsequently caught fire. The planes bombed and strafed the ships all morning, even refugees struggling in the water and those that had made landfall didn't escape their attention. In all, 11 ships sank that Saturday morning with the loss of many lives. Even more were to die as they attempted to reach Sumatra. Now our next ship will be the SS Weiner Brock. She was a Scottish built steamship that was both the royal yacht of Sarawak and a merchant ship frequently used between Singapore and Kuching. She would be owned by the owners Sarawak Steamship Co. And she would be built by the shipbuilders Ramage and Ferguson LTD. Now the gross tonnage of this ship would be 1670 gross registered tons, with her length being 240.7 feet. She would have had a beam of 41.3 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 12 knots. Now the ship would be launched on the 10th of November 1927 and she would be completed in February 1928. Now during the early stages of World War II in the Pacific, the Weinerbrook was taken over by the Royal Navy, given a grey paint job and equipped with a 4 inch deck gun at the front. Two Lewis guns at the back and depth charges. The Australian and British officers on board, mostly from the Malay Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve, were requested to stay on the ship, which became known as the HMS Weinerbrook. Now on the 14th of February 1942, while evacuating nurses and injured soldiers from Singapore, the ship was bombed and sunk by Japanese planes. Now some survivors who made it to Banka Island, east of Sumatra, in the Dutch East Indies, were tragically killed by the Imperial Japanese Army. Others were held as prisoners in POW camps in Palembang and Montok. Now our next ship will be the Chumli. She was a British steam merchant ship. She would be owned by WJ Tandem LTD and she would be built by WJ Tandem LTD. Now the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 5,445 gross registered tons.
and the ship would be completed in May 1938. Now, during World War II, on the 5th of November 1942, the Chamley, under command of Captain Daniel Morley Williams, was bombed and damaged by a German Ju-88 aircraft from Benang, Norway. She was beached about 10 miles southwest of South Cape Spitsbergen. The next day at 3.58 p.m. on the 6th of November, the U-boat U-625 fired torpedoes at the stranded Chamli and scored a hit. The wreck was later bombed again by a Ju-88. The captain, along with three crew members and nine gunners, survived. They would spend 59 days at sea in freezing temperatures before rescue, while many others were lost due to frostbite. 36 crew members and 9 gunners lost their lives in this tragic sinking. Now our next ship is a ship we all know and love once again. The White Starliner, the SS Ceramic. She was an ocean liner owned by the White Star Line and she would be built by the shipbuilders Holland and Wolf. They were based in Belfast. Now if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this liner would be 18,481 gross registered tons, with her length being 655.1 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 69.4 feet. The ship could go a speed of 16 knots and the vessel would be launched on the 11th of December 1912 and she would be completed on the 5th of July 1913. Now her maiden voyage would be on the 24th of July 1913, when she left Liverpool for Australia. She would survive World War I, but during World War II her fate would be different. In February 1940, the ceramic was commissioned as a troop ship. Sadly, in December 1942, a U-boat torpedoed and sank the ship, with only one survivor. 656 passengers lost their lives in this sinking. Now our next ship will be the RMS Empress of Canada. She was an ocean liner owned by the company Canadian Pacific Steamships. She would be built by the shipbuilders Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company. Now if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 21,517 gross registered tons, with her length being 653 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 77.7 .7 feet. The ship could go a speed of 18 knots. The vessel would be launched on the 18th of August 1920 and she would be completed in May 1922 with her maiden voyage being on the 5th of May 1922. Now, during World War II, she was converted for use as a troop ship. However, sadly, on the 14th of March 1943, 
at around 1 a.m., the Empress of Canada was on her way from Durban, South Africa, to Takoradi. The ship was carrying Italian prisoners of war, as well as Polish and Greek refugees. She was then struck by a torpedo and sunk by the Italian submarine Leonardo da Vinci at midnight. Now, this tragic sinking occurred approximately 400 miles south of Cape Palmas off the coast of Africa, out of roughly 1,800 passengers on board, unfortunately, 392 passengers lost their lives in this sinking. Now our next ship will be the RMS Laconia. She was an ocean liner owned by the Cunard Line and she would be built by the shipbuilders Swan Hunter. Now if we talk about her specifics, the gross tonnage of this vessel would be 19,695 gross registered tons, with her length being 601.3 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 73.7 feet. The ship could go a speed of 16 knots. The vessel would be launched on the 9th of April 1921. She would be completed in January 1922, with her maiden voyage being on the 25th of May 1922, from Southampton to New York City. However, during World War II, she was converted into a armed merchant cruiser, and later a troop ship. She was sunk in the South Atlantic Ocean on the 12th of September 1942, by a German U-boat commanded by Commander Werner Hartenstein. Now, some estimates of the death toll have suggested that over 1,658 passengers drowned when the RMS Laconia sank. Now, before this video ends, I quickly want to take a moment to thank a friend of mine who is also the owner of the Instagram account you can see right now on the screen, Maritime Disasters. Uh, my good sir, I quickly want to thank you for all the help you have given me in making uh, this video. It couldn't have been done without you. And uh, yeah, I quickly want to thank you. So Maritime, he posts about shipwrecks on his Instagram page, as you can clearly see and read. Now he uh, covers more modern uh, shipwrecks, but he also covers some older shipwrecks. He covers some shipwrecks you might have heard of and some shipwrecks you might not have heard of. Um, I always enjoy uh, reading his posts. I always learn a lot about ships in his posts and I will leave a quick uh, link to his Instagram uh, page as well. Again, Maritime Disasters on Instagram. Be sure to check him out. And again, my dear friend Maritime, I quickly want to thank you. This video couldn't have been done without you. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Again, I will leave a link to his Instagram page and uh, yeah, let's get on with the, uh, with the outro. And that marks the end of a video, my friends. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel, as that would help out the channel a lot. Now, if you have any thoughts, comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below as I absolutely love reading your comments. And please let me know in the comment section down below as well what ships you would like me to cover in the future. Now be as well sure to check out our social media pages. We are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, and we also recently have a website, oldshippinglines.com. 
where we have articles of the ships we cover and we have book reviews as well. I think you will enjoy the website very much. Now, with that out of the way, guys, I wish you all a good night or day, wherever you are. Stay safe, stay happy, and we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye, my friends.